now have Cole Custer joining us, driver of the number 41 Ford Mustang for Stuart Haas Racing. We're going to go straight into questions, and our first question is going to come from Deb Williams. Go ahead with your question, Deb. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, Cole, on making the uh, playoffs in your rookie season. You made your uh, the Xfinity Series playoffs last year, but with this being your rookie season in Cup and making the Cup playoffs, how do you, other than the racetracks involved in the playoffs, how do you see these playoffs being different from last year as well as your approach to them? Um, well, I think the biggest thing is that there's just more competition. Um, you know, in the Xfinity Series, you have probably – you know, five to six guys that can probably make it to Miami where here it's, uh, you know, there's 10 or 12 guys that could. So it's, uh, it's tough. I mean, you got to try and you got to be really competitive and you got to beat a lot of good guys, but at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in a hole either. So there's a lot to balance. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Our next, our next question is going to come from Jenna Fryer. Go ahead with your question, Jenna. Jenna, do you copy? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go next to Mark Garrow with PRN. Go ahead with your question, Mark. Thank you. Cole, what does it feel like to make the playoff and we so-called experts, nobody had you making the playoff uh, when the year started and yet you're in. So how, how does that make you feel and what are your expectations? Um, I mean, it's huge. I mean, I think we can go in there and, you know, prove some people wrong is the biggest thing. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's about being consistent and it's about being competitive. And uh, I think, you know, we found to try and, you know, we've had a lot of peaks, peaks and valleys, I think, at times this year. Um, but at the same time, you know, we just need to try and level it out more going into these playoffs. And I think if we can be consistent and we can uh, put it all together, put all the pieces together for these last 10 races, I think we've shown that we can we can compete with anybody. It's just um, trying to put those pieces together every single race. Thank you. We're going to try again with Jenna Fryer. Go ahead with your question, Jenna. Still not hearing you, so we're going to go next to Jeff Gluck. Go ahead with your question, Jeff. Yeah, Cole, um, obviously uh, you're, you're probably considered a dark horse. So I'm wondering, um, aside from you, um, who do you think is a dark horse team or a surprise that people should watch for as these playoffs go on? You know, I mean, I think you look at my teammate, Eric Almirola. I mean, I think they've been kind of knocking on the door, you know, all year pretty much um, being consistent. And it only takes one thing to go right, and I think they can win some races. So um, I can I can definitely say that you can probably look at them a little bit. Thank you. Our next question will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead with your question, Bob. Yeah, Cole, you're rookie of the year since you made the playoffs and the others didn't, and it's created a lot of chatter on the Twitterverse and stuff. I'm curious, uh, do you read it? Does it, people who say you don't deserve it, do you get mad at it? And kind of where do you fall on how rookie of the year should be decided? I don't know. I'm, I don't make the rules. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, I guess we won it, you know. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not the most confident guy out there that's going to say that I'm better than all those guys. I know that, you know, all of us, I think, have been pretty competitive this year. And, you know, I think we've all made big strides. And, you know, it's just a matter of, I don't know, we won, we won in Kentucky. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so we were working the years. So um, it's, it's tough to swallow, I guess, for some people. But I think uh, it is what it is. So. I, I'm going to be proud of it, and I think our team should be proud of it. And I think we've we've shown that we can compete and we can, you know, have good finishes. So it's just a matter of being consistent and putting it all together. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Dustin Albino. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Yeah, Cole, right off Bob's question, uh, obviously there was a stack rookie class. So what's it mean personally to win rookie of the year? I mean, it's huge. I mean, to have, you know, be able to race against those guys, you know, Tyler – Christopher, um, John Hunter, I mean, I think we were all, you know, made huge strides this year and we all, you know, were fairly competitive and it's, uh, it was definitely cool to be able to race these guys for the last 10 to, you know, five to 10 years and, you know, to, to move up to the cup level together and have that battle still kind of going on was, was really cool. Thanks, Cole. 
Our next question is going to come from Brian Mapes. Go ahead with your question, Brian. Hey, Cole. You've had a lot of in-season success, but you've never gotten that season-long award like Christopher Bell's got the trucks, Tyler's got the Xfinity title. What was it like uh, with that rivalry with them to finally get one over on them? Um, I mean, it's cool, you know. I mean, uh, to win that, it, it's one of those things you're going to look back in five to ten years and say that was pretty cool to win because, you know, it was a really good rookie class. And I think it's it's cool. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it, but it, it's uh, one of those things where it was competitive. And I think for us to come out on top of it, it's definitely something to be proud of. Our next question is going to come from Steve Schweitzer. Go ahead with the question, Steve. Well, Austin Dillon was just on, and he said that uh, every single point is important um, when it comes down to playoff time. And if you've got to put a bumper on somebody, that's what you do. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And uh, as you being a rookie, are you a little less uh, um, likely to take that approach? Uh, no, I think he put it about right. You know, you're not going to do it every single lap and every single time in the race. you got to do it at the right time. But um, – if it's going to move you to the next round or it's what you need to do to make your team move forward, it's, it's what you got to do. Um, I don't want to be wrecking people. I think for me, it's, you know, you want to move them out of the way cleanly. I don't think you want to just start wrecking people, but um, it's something where you got to do what's best for your team. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Davey Seagal. Go ahead with your question, Davey. Thanks, Matt. Cole, uh, you got some unique circumstances having all of your teammates with you in the playoffs. And I assume information sharing and the help that you guys give each other will be the same. So if so, how often will you lean on them, notably Kevin, since you've worked with him in the past in your years in Xfinity? Yeah, I mean, Kevin's been a, a huge help to me this year. I've tried to talk with him pretty much every single week weekend to try and get an idea of what to expect going into the races. And um, he's definitely been a huge help. Um, at the same time, I think you got to make your own path at times and you got to have your own ideas because um, at sometimes, you know, you're just going to confuse yourself having a, lot of, having a lot of different people talking in your ear. So um, I think, you know, we all – I have some great teammates at Stuart Haas Racing and we've obviously all made the playoffs and that's a huge deal for our organization. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, you. I think we have a great team that can work great together and um, share info and it's just – it's, it's a dream come true, I guess, to have those kind of, kinds of teammates. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Mitchell Brewer. Go ahead with your question, Mitchell. Well, looking ahead at the first round of the playoffs, there's two tracks that you raced at twice this season and two tracks that you won at last season in Xfinity. Does that raise your confidence going into the next three races? Um, I think so for sure. But uh, at the same time, you know, you got to make sure that you're doing your homework before the races and um, going in there a hundred percent. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in the playoffs. I think we've seen in the, in the past. So it's a matter of trying to make sure you don't put yourself in a hole, I think is one of the biggest things. And um, you know, you gotta be, you gotta run competitively. That's for sure. But um, you don't want to be one of those guys that has to be desperate going into the final race. Our next question is going to come from Jeff Magalietti. Go ahead with the question, Jeff. Hey, Cole. Congratulations, and thank you for joining us. Outside of the Stuart Haas garage, who have you turned to? For, who has given you the best advice in, term, in terms of dealing with this playoff process? Um, you know, I think I lean on my crew chief, Mike Shiplett, a lot. He's been a, he's been a huge help. I mean, over the past two years of – being a really calm guy that can give you a lot of advice on a lot of different things. And um, he's definitely, you know, pointing me in the right direction a lot, of, a lot of times. And I think going into these playoffs, it's just a matter of taking it one step at a time. And you do things, you do enough things right, you're going to find yourself in a good position. Thank you, Cole. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Kathy Brown. Go ahead with your question, Kathy. Kathy, can you copy? Okay, our next question is going to come from Kelvin LaPierre. Go ahead with your question, Kelvin. Hey, Cole, congrats on making the playoffs in your rookie season. Going back to the advice you've kind of gotten, has Tony Stewart given you any advice being the team owner going into uh, what to expect here in the first round? I mean, Tony's definitely, a you know, probably every driver's dream come true to have as a boss. I mean, somebody I've watched since I was a little kid on TV and one of the you know legends of our sport. 
um, is, is pretty amazing. And he's definitely one of those guys that, you know, to have somebody, you know, give you support going into different things and going into races and into the playoffs, it means the world. I mean, you know, you know, we had a team pep rally this week and he was on it and on the zoom call, obviously, cause we can't do it in person now, but um, you know, to have that kind of support from him and seeing how we're doing it is, is it means a lot for me who I've, I've watched him since I was a little kid. All right. Thanks. Cole. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We're going to try Kathy Brown once again, go ahead with your question, Kathy. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. This I'm new to this. Um, I'm not an expert, but I did have you winning a race this year and making rookie of the year. So congratulations. With that being said, is there anything in this totally different world that we're in being a rookie that you feel that you've missed out on with the COVID-19 situation? Uh, you know, I think all the races with the fans before the race is probably the biggest thing, you know, it was cool going through Daytona and still having, you know, it be a normal race, you know, because you have all the pre-race stuff going on and it's really cool. And, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things, just the atmosphere before the races with the fans is probably the biggest thing that we missed out on. Okay, thank you. We're going to go next to Bob Pockers. Go ahead with your question, Bob. Yeah, Cole, do you feel like you're at a disadvantage being a rookie in the playoffs as well as not having any practice? Uh, you can go back and forth on it for sure. I mean, I think I would definitely like some practice. <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those things, even though we've been to, you know, tracks like Darlington before, you know, some of these guys have been there for 10 to 15 years. And, um, you know, there's stuff as a rookie that we just like to try in our car to see if it was better or worse. Um, but we don't really have that opportunity. So we make our best educated guess on what, you know, we brought there last time, what our teammates did and, uh, what we've, you know, compiled through this whole year of what works and what doesn't work. But um, it's just a matter of adapting as fast as you can and trying to use your notebook as best you can. Our next question will come from Michael Shelton. Go ahead with your question, Michael. Thank you very much. Well, kind of following up on what was asked of you earlier, Cole, obviously Darlington's a track you had success at in the Xfinity Series. You've raced there, of course, twice this year, but this is the Southern 500, one of the crown jewels of the sport. I just wondering, you know, racing there, your throwback weekend, all the festivities and the history involved, what's going to be your mindset entering this Sunday's race as opposed to your previous Darlington races? Will it be a little bit more nerves or? Um, I think so for sure. Uh, one of the biggest things is how you manage your car for that long of a race in a playoff race. Um, you know, a lot of times, sometimes you kind of be a little bit conservative at the start of the race to make sure you don't knock the fence down and ruin your day. Or now, I mean, you might have to be aggressive from lap one. So you might see a lot more guys hitting the fence throughout the race. So um, that's probably the biggest thing is how you're going to manage your car throughout that long of a race. I think it's the biggest thing. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Gabe McDonald. Go ahead with your question, Gabe. Gabe, you're on mute. That's the question. Yeah. Well, uh, just piggybacking on that, how would you say this track kind of fits your racing style? Um, I think for me, it's just it's a fun track to go and move around at and try and what you know you do what's best for you. Uh, you can kind of figure out your own kind of path uh, of what works and what doesn't for your line and how you work the throttle and how you want to save your tires. And I think uh, everybody kind of has their unique thing of in their own style of how they attack that racetrack. Our next question is going to come from Luis Torres. Go ahead with your question, Luis. Hey, Cole. So this is the third time this season going to, Dar to Darlington with no practice, of course, as many, and I imagine you are very accustomed to at this rate. How important is it going for the rest of the season to have those races, with the exception of the Roval, coming back and rely on the notes that you've had to be better at those races? Um, It's huge. I mean, obviously, I mean, that's all we have to really lean on is – you know, what, we've, what we brought there last time because we don't have any practice to kind of work through things. So um, having keeping good notes and, you know, making sure you're staying on top of things and coming to the racetrack prepared and, you know, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's is pretty much everything that we need. You know, it's very important right now. So I think we, we've kept good notes. We've, we've gotten better throughout the year, and it's just a matter of trying to put all the pieces to the, pu to the puzzle together. All right, thank you, and best of luck. Our next question is going to come from Marty Chikala. Go ahead with your question, Marty. Thanks, Matt. 
Uh, Cole, congratulations on making the playoffs. Um, you're one of the uh, lower uh, end drivers on the playoffs, coming in 11th ranked. And there's a bunch of wild card tracks we've got on the schedule. Obviously, we've got Bristol as the cutoff for the round of 16, Talladega on the Rovo in the round of 12, and then you got Martinsville in the round of eight. Of those four tracks, uh, which wild card track do you think that you could use the best to your opportunity to try and make it up the rankings? Um. You know, whatever one's next, I guess, you know, you just look forward to the next one and you take it one step at a time. I don't know how else to answer your question really, but um, it's definitely, you know, there's some tracks. I think, I think all the cutoff races are going to be tough ones because they're very unpredictable and they're very, uh, they're tracks that a lot of things can go wrong at. So I think they're all going to be pretty exciting. Thanks for your time, Cole. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. And our final question is going to come from Cole Cusimano. Go ahead with the question, Cole. Hey, fellow Cole. Uh, looking ahead to Phoenix, should you advance? Uh, you got your first top 10 of 2020 there, and you got a top 10 at Loudon as well, a track that races really similar to Phoenix. Um, with another similar track in Richmond coming up soon, how important is it to fine-tune your notes for that series finale? And are you confident in your data already attained with that new package? Yeah, I think, you know, we've been good at the, the flat tracks, it seems like, flat short tracks this year. So, um, you know, it's tough. Like I said, there's no practice to work through things. But at the same time, you know, we've had a good notebook and we make our best educated guesses going into the race. And I think we've done good at that. And, uh, you know, it's just trying to use all your notes and trying to make sure that you don't leave, you know, you cross all the T's and dot all the I's pretty much going into every single race. Thank you, sir. Well, Cole, congratulations for making the playoffs and good luck this weekend at the track too tough to tame as you start the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. And as a reminder to the video, this will be the last interview the last on this link. So if you want to hop over to the next link that we have posted on NASCARmedia.com, we'll have William.